Welcome, and thank you for joining me today. We're gonna to be talking today about to everything there is a season. You know, in Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one, Jesus says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. There is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Let's see today what we're talking about. Why would King Solomon, why would he write this? He defined a season for us in that first verse. He said, to everything there's a season, and then he says, it's a time for every purpose under heaven. That's our season. Now we may think of a season as fall, winter, spring, summer, our young, middle age, old age. Those are seasons, yes, but there's a season for our purpose. And I want us to cover those today. And so let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse two. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck what is planted. Let's establish something from the very beginning. God has planned you from the beginning of days. You're not an accident. You never were. God has had you planned before you were ever inside your mother's womb. From the beginning of days, He has planned you. I'm going to show you a scripture. It's in Psalms 139.16. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they were all written, and the days were fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. And in Jeremiah 29.11, For I, this is God, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, thoughts to give you a future and a hope. You see, there are no accidents. God has had you planned from the beginning. Wow, from the beginning, before you were ever here, you were here in his mind from the beginning. So if God has given you a plan, how often I wonder, has somebody told you that you have no value, that you're worthless, you'll never be anything? How often has that been spoken to you? Those words are destructive, they'll tear you down. God's word will restore you and build you up. And so I want us to look at words that build us up today. I want you to see what kind of plans God has for you, not to tear you down, not to destroy you, but to build you up. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse four. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Weep, laugh, mourn, dance all in the same verse. I believe, since we're talking about seasons, that God wants you to understand that in this time of weeping, and we all have them, in this time of weeping, if we stay with the Lord, He will turn your weeping into laughter. In this time of mourning, this deep, deep pain of mourning, oh, how often that, that pain just seems to come back to us and come back that time of mourning and grief. But if we stay with Jesus, hold his hand, he'll bring you from the mourning through to the dancing, through to the rejoicing. You know, that brings me to this next verse, which is the very reason that I had to dig out all of this study because this verse wouldn't let go of me. It just hung on. And I think it's not just for me, but it's for a lot of people today. And that's verse five. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to reframe. There is a time 
that God has chosen and told us to gather stones. Stones. Now, in my time, I've read this many, many times, over and over. And you know what I thought of it? When I read Ecclesiastes chapter 3, a time for this and a time for that, seasons under heaven, it was poetic. It was beautiful. I read it. King Solomon wrote it. I read it. And then I moved on. And God said, I want you to take time today to study this. See why I would put it in the Word for you. So, stones. I got to looking that up. Stones were memorials. They were gathered as a memory. They were stacked and gathered as a memorial to something, event that had happened. God showed us one of those very events in Joshua chapter 4, the first four verses. God has had a miracle performed in the fact that he had just dried up the, red, the Jordan, River Jordan. It was now dry, dry bed. And all the Israelites had walked across and the waters had been heaped up on either side. Here they go across. They are now across and God tells Joshua, have one man from all 12 tribes come back, pick up one of these stones out of the dry riverbed, put it on your back and carry it to your lodging place tonight. So God said, pick up that stone. Let's see why he would tell them to pick up that stone. Verse 6, this, that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time come, saying, what do these stones mean to you? And the last part of verse 7 says, and these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. Here we see that God tells us to pick up a stone but it's for the victory that they have just had so that we can tell of God's victories time and time again, generation to generation, tell of his victories. But I suspect, otherwise it wouldn't be in the word where it says cast away stones. There's time to cast away stones. Well, we wouldn't cast that one away. God told us to collect it. So what would we cast away? I suspect that many of us over the course of time have collected stones that we didn't need. And these stones are also stones of memories, not good memories, hurt, pain. They were deep. They were so hurtful that we don't let go of them. We began to pick up those stones instead of moving on and walking on and seeing the victory that God brought us through, even though we're not there anymore. We still put that stone on our back and carry it to our lodging place every day. And then when people ask us about it, oh, we can tell all about it. We can tell everybody about that stone. They don't need to be asking us about that stone. That wasn't one God told us to collect. He wants us to collect the stones of victory, victory. But we so often fill up our backpack with stones that'll weigh us down, that'll slow us down, and they are not words of victory. Cast away that stone. I don't know how to, you might say. I, I don't know how. Well, 1 Peter 5 and 7. Casting all your care upon him for, which means because he cares for you. Casting is throwing it. Throw that Take that heavy burden of yours and throw it. Where do you throw it? You throw it at the throne of Jesus. Let him deal with it. He said he would take it. But it's not one that we were ever told to pick up. Yes, it happened to us. And so I can just see right now, if I could reach out into your home or wherever you are, I could see this. You'd be saying to me, now Evangelist D., you have no idea what I've been through. How can you even say this to me? You don't know me. You weren't there. There wasn't anybody there to help me. I was alone. I needed help and I was by myself. How can I forget that? Well, I'm going to agree with you immediately. I wasn't there. No, but God was. He says, let me have that stone. I'll take it. 
it's too heavy for you to carry. Don't carry what he doesn't want you to carry anymore. Why do you think he has me reading this to you today? It's to let go of, throw it away. Memorial stones are placed sometimes in such a position that it weighs us down and we're not ready to pick up. There's nothing left on our back to carry the victories, the memorial stones of victory that God would point out to us and say, oh, carry that one. And we might say, but Lord, my back is already too heavy to carry it. Cast away what he didn't give you. Ecclesiastes 3 and 5, <clears throat> a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. What does that mean? A time to embrace is a time to gather in, into your bosom, a time to gather in. Yes, there are memories that we want to bring in, but then there are some that we need to push away, just like the stones, push them away. Don't bring them into your heart any longer. God wants to clean that out, clean it out. Matthew eleven thirty, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God is not asking you to carry the heavy things of life. He said, you take my burden. It's easy. In comparison to what we've been carrying, oh, wow, his burden, his yoke, it is so light and so easy to walk with him. Hand him your stuff that you've been collecting. Give it to him today. Collect the victories, not the pitfalls of life, not the things that were so bad. Have I spoken to you today? Has there been something that I have said out of Ecclesiastes? There is a time and a season for all of us, but God wants you to cast away the things that have been hurting you. He doesn't want you to carry it. That's the reason this whole message wouldn't let go of me. It's for someone today. Don't carry it any longer. Give it to him. There is a time you were planned. You were purposed. There is a future for you, a hope. Oh, God loves you. He has thought about you since the beginning of days. You were on his mind. Take this other stuff away. Hand it to him. He says, yoke up with me. Embrace him today. Let him heal your heart today. He wants to. That's the reason he sent me to your home today. God bless you. We hope you've enjoyed Fresh Manna for today with Evangelist Dee Levins. For more teaching from Dee, read Echoes from God, a Christian study book for growing deep and strong in the faith. Connect with Dee and purchase her book at dlevins.com.